Welcome back. Right now we are joined by award-winning poet Elizabeth Acevedo. She has an all-new book coming out today. Very excited to talk with Elizabeth about this and more. How are you doing? It's a big day for you. It's such a pleasure to be here with you, Christine. Thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted to be here. And I'm doing well. It's a little nerve-wracking to release a book today, but I'm, I'm feeling okay. Well, this isn't your first book that you have written, but this book, it's unique in some great ways. So tell me more about Inheritance, a visual poem. Yes, I have three other novels. However, this is the first illustrated um, book that I have in the world and one that is really thinking about reaching some younger audiences, but also some older audiences. It is being developed or was developed as a book that could be given as a gift that could be passed along to aunties and to nieces. Um, and so I'm, I'm really thankful. And it's a poem about my hair. It's a poem about reclaiming hair that has been told that it needs to be straightened or it needs to be quote unquote fixed and what it means to accept and love yourself for the way that your natural hair grows, you know, on its head. And so it's um, trying to really affirm young people that they are good enough as they are. And your beautiful poems, your words combine so well with the incredible illustrations. Tell me more about the illustrator and how the two of you were able to come together to create this beautiful work. Yes, Andrea Pippins is an amazing actor, um, award winning. Her mother is from Brazil, her father is from Illinois. And so it was incredible to work with her because I think she understands the ways that both Latin America and also the US thinks about and contextualizes hair. And I will tell you, I didn't have a lot of feedback. I know a lot of authors tend to work really closely with their illustrators. I saw the sketches and I just knew like, oh, there's nothing more for me to say. Like this is someone who knows her craft and who really found a way into my language. Um, and I had nothing more to, to really give outside of very small, um, nitpicky critiques because she just did such a great job. Elizabeth, have you always been a writer and what made you decide to write poetry in particular? I have been a writer for as long as I have known writing, right? As long as I was, you know, I think I was five when I first learned how to write and I knew that I wanted to tell stories. Um, my mother has poems from back when I was five years old. And I think for me, I really wanted, I loved song, I loved music. I grew up in a household that played a lot of music. Uh, my brothers would play hip hop. My parents would play old school torch songs called boleros. And so I thought that I wanted to be a songwriter and poetry naturally came from, from songwriting, from hip hop, um, into the development of, of this almost acapella music form of, of spoken word that I, I found my way into. And you write for all ages, but especially young people, and your poetry deals with some tough issues such as immigration, oppression, race, discrimination. What made you decide to focus on those topics in particular? Yes, I mean, I was an eighth grade English teacher. I taught in Maryland. And for me, I realized one, how much my students were engaged with the world, how much they were paying attention, and how they felt like a lot of the text that they were reading didn't actually incorporate what they were thinking, right? It felt like they knew these difficult things existed. A lot of them had undergone some of these very difficult issues, but they weren't seeing themselves represented in text. And so I think I realized that young people can handle more than we believe they can. And in fact, are handling those things on a daily basis. And that also they crave for stories that have that have love and have joy and have hope, you know, included in them. And so for me, my writing was an attempt to, to, to grasp all of those things and kind of offer it back to my students. I think I'm still writing to them. I know all ages will love this new book, but what age group did you specifically target or what age do you think is ideal for reading this book? So initially when I wrote this poem, I was a senior in college and I think I targeted towards other students that were 20, 21 like myself and were really trying to figure out how to um, come up with their own ideas that maybe their parents weren't um, as inclined to, to understand anymore. But I will say that the illustrations and the revision makes it so that it's probably great for any ages um, nine to 90. I think that there's a lot that 
that can be, you know, it's a wide swath clearly, but I'm hoping that grandmothers and aunties and, you know, um, aunts, right, can, can read this with their nieces and their little ones and, and really talk about the inheritance that we have of, of our natural bodies and how we can learn to love ourselves. Well, Elizabeth, it's been such a pleasure in meeting you, learning more about who you are, your poetry, and more. This is an incredible book. I know your words will last beyond all of our lifetimes, so it's very exciting. This is out today. You can get it where books are sold. Also, you can find out more about Elizabeth Acevedo online. Also, where you buy your books, make sure to find other books by Elizabeth as well. Very inspiring poet. We'll be back with more right after this.